Greetings wonderful people, my name is Awan, and a couple months ago I started reading books about game development on a daily basis. In order to reinforce this new habit, I bought myself an electronic book named Kindle Paperwhite 4, and in this video I want to introduce you to its drawbacks so that you can decide whether this device is worth your money. What a wonderful screenshot! Too bad this device operates in black and white mode only. It is its major drawback, because objects on pictures are usually nearly indistinguishable. However, the cool thing is the Kindle software which works on PCs, phones and this ebook. I can boot up my laptop and open the same books or screenshot as in the portable gadget. The built-in dictionary is actually quite great, it's capable of describing almost any word in the book. But at the same time, Kindle Paperwhite comes with an English to Russian translator powered by Bing Translator, and it is ludicrous at best. The result only gives you one option which was wrong 95% of the times I tried to use it. Moreover, it requires internet connection, while the free dictionary in my phone weighs a couple megabytes and works perfectly in offline mode. Controlling the ebook can feel laggy. There is always a delay between your input and something actually happening on the screen. The strange animations only reinforce the rather unpleasant feelings you get while navigating the text. Kindle and Amazon in general make books very easy to purchase. It is scary how effortless this process is, in fact. You'll be able to buy and start reading any available book within half a minute. Sure, you can refund your purchase, but how often do you check if the funds have accidentally disappeared from your account? Finally, highlighting something precisely is not always an easy task, especially if some part of the text is located on a different page. All drawbacks aside, I will not abandon Kindle Paperwhite for a long time and I will recommend it to anybody who wants to buy an ebook. Due to the ads, the Paperwhite screen is never fully disabled. Despite this fact, while reading the books 15 to 45 minutes a day, I need to charge it up only once a month. Most of the downsides listed above actually allow the system to last this long. If you read a lot, choosing digital books over their paperback versions will pay off very quickly. The producers say this ebook is waterproof. When I tried to test the theory, my device wasn't damaged in any way, but for some reason water could trigger touch controls. I guess it's a cool feature in case of some accidents, but honestly I'd rather avoid fully immersing this electronic device into water, especially if that's not necessary. Very wide range of adjustable font sizes and screen brightnesses will fit even the most demanding taste. If you want to, you can make this book emit little to no light at all or shine bright like a diamond. This gadget is very light and portable and it's easy to take with you on any adventure. And it literally fits my pocket. Generally, highlighting sentences, making notes, scrolling pages, adding bookmarks, viewing them later and anything else related to actually reading books works perfectly, I can't complain. Yeah, the controls are quirky at times, but it's really not a life-changing disaster. In a nutshell, to me Amazon Kindle Paperwhite 4 feels like holding a real paperback book in your hands, but it also offers a few quality of life functions on top. Surely, some things in this device are quite bad, but now that you know about these issues, it's up to you to decide whether you can live with them or not. If you know any good books about game development, please recommend them to me in the comments to this video. And if you don't want to miss my review of these books, subscribe to this channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Farewell.